Miss Leverdine, and today I want to share with you how I crocheted this pastel color block cardigan. For this project, I am using light blue yarn that I got from Amazon, lilac yarn that I also got from Amazon, and if you would like to get the same yarn that I am using today, I will leave my Amazon affiliate links in the description box down below so you could get these two as well. In addition to these two colors, I also use green and some pink as well as yellow yarn. However, I did use way more yellow than this little ball right here. The reason it's so small is because I actually already crocheted a piece of the cardigan. So yeah, the ball of yarn's really small right now, but you're going to need more. I don't know exactly how much of each color I use, so sorry about that, but I do know that I'm using a size five millimeter hook. So with that, Let's get started. So in addition to the yarn and the hook, I'm also going to be using this cardigan for this project. Yes, I already have a color block cardigan. However, I wanted to make one in crochet form and also switch up the colors a little bit so it's not the exact same cardigan, just as crochet. And the reason I bring this cardigan out is because I like using this for a reference in terms of size because I really like the way that this cardigan fits me and also it's easy to break apart the various pieces I need to put a cardigan together because of the color block situation here. So for example this front piece I knew exactly the shape and size I needed to crochet in order for the cardigan to come together in the end because I just laid it on top of the cardigan that I already have and pretty much replicated the shape. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the two front pieces, the sleeves, and the back. So I would highly suggest that you do the same thing. Find yourself a cardigan that you already have in your closet and you love the fit of and then pretty much copy the various pieces. So yours may not be a color block cardigan, so it may not be as easy to see the various <laughs> different pieces, but pretty much every cardigan is made up of this. Two front pieces, two sleeves, and a back piece, as well as possibly a trim right here, but that is of course optional. So since I've already made one front piece, I'm going to show you how to make it, and then we're going to learn how to make the sleeves, and then finally we're going to make the back piece, and once we have made all of the pieces, I'm going to show you how I put them together, and then add the finishing touches. So yes, let's start off with the front piece. And like I said, I did want to switch up the colors, so instead of like this being green, I changed it to yellow, and instead of this being purple, I'm going to change it to blue, so I'm going to grab my blue yarn and create a slip knot. Now, if you're a complete beginner to crochet, I will have a crochet for beginners video down in the description box below that teaches you how to create a slip knot, how to chain, and how to crochet basic stitches. So, again, that will be linked in the description box below. Okay, so after I have created my slip knot, I'm going to chain, um, I believe it was 40 chains, but however many chains from here to here. So you actually don't have to do the same number of chains or stitches or rows as I do. Just go based off of your cardigan or your size and preference. But if you're wondering, I am going to be chaining 40 chains because that's how many I need to chain in order for it to fit from the center to the side of the cardigan. And after you've completed your chains, again, I crocheted 40 chains. I'm going to go back on it with a half double crochet. And a half double crochet is yarn over through the stitch, yarn over back through the stitch, yarn over through the last three loops left on your hook. Again, yarn over through the stitch, yarn over back through the stitch, yarn over through the last three loops left on your hook. Now the reason I'm using a half double crochet as opposed to a single crochet or a double crochet is because a single crochet is very tight, which is good. You don't want your project to be full of holes like a double crochet. A double crochet is very open and you'll see that your project will be filled with holes and I don't really like that. However, I do like for a double crochet how flexible it is compared to a single crochet. So I decided to go for the middle ground and do a half double crochet, which is not as tight as a single crochet, but is not as open as a double crochet. It's just the perfect, the perfect amount. So that's why I'm using a half double crochet, but of course you can use any stitch that you would like. 
So yeah, from here you're just going to go back on your chain with the stitch that you decide to use. Again, mine is a half double crochet and it is yarn over through the stitch, yarn over back through the stitch, yarn over through the last three loops. So fairly simple to do. So I'm just going to continue making my half double crochets all along the chain until I reach the end of the row. So now that I've reached the end of the row, I'm going to make sure that I go into the very last stitch and this is what the project looks like so far with one row of half double crochet. So then from here, I'm going to chain one, flip the project over, then I'm going to make sure that I go into the very first stitch of the new row with, of course, a half double crochet and then just continue on the rest of the row making sure that I go into every single stitch and What's really important is that every time you reach the end of the row, you're going to make sure that you chain one and then go into the very first stitch of the new row. And we need to do that to keep the sides of the project straight. And then once we build up to around this point where it needs to actually uh, decrease, that's when we're going to start decreasing at the end of every row. And I will show you how to do that once we get there. But for now, we're going to continue making rows and rows and rows of half double crochet until we get to this point right here. So it's going to be a rectangular piece in the beginning and then we're going to change it up and I'll show you how to change it up once we get there. But for now, make sure that every time you reach the end of the row, you want to chain one, flip the project over and then go into the very first stitch. That way your corners are nice and straight. So yeah, from here, just continue making rows and rows of single crochet until you get to the point where you want the v-neck to start. So after a few rows, this is what the project looks like so far. I think I'm close to halfway done here, but I just wanted to show you the progress. And again, I'm making sure that my edges are straight by going into every single stitch, making sure that I go into the very last stitch, and then chain one, flip the project over, then go into the very first stitch of the new row, and just continue on making half double crochets for the rest of the row and building on top of it. So yeah, this is what my corners look like, nice and straight. And again, I'm just going to continue making rows and rows of half double crochet until I get to this point. Okay, so now I have completed the rows and rows of half double crochet that I needed in order to reach this point. So from here, we actually need to start decreasing. And the way that we decrease is we're actually going to switch up the way we do things at the end of every row. So instead of chaining one, flipping it over, and then going into the very first stitch, and then going into the rest of the row, we're actually... Well, let me just show you. We're, we're going to make sure that we go into the very last stitch still, and we are still going to chain one at the end of every row, and we are still going to make sure that we go into the very first stitch of the new row. But this is where we're going to start changing things up. So instead of going into every single stitch from here on, we're actually going to skip over the second stitch of every row and then go into the third stitch, and after we've done that, then we're going to go into every single stitch of the row until you reach the end. So, little by little, you'll start to see that this side will start to curve inward, and that's exactly what we want. We want to make that V shape, and we're only going to do it on one side. So always remember what side you're going to do it on, because on the other side, we're still going to keep it straight. So on this side, it's straight, and only on this side, it's curved. So we're only going to be doing it on this side, so I'm going to reach the other end of this project. And once I do, I am again going to make sure that I go into the very last stitch of the new row, and then chain one, flip the project over, then go into the first stitch of the new row, and then I'm just going to continue on into every single stitch until I reach the other end. And for the other end, we're going to decrease. So. Hopefully that did not confuse you. So one side, we're going to keep straight and we're going to chain one, go into every single stitch. And then on the other side, we're going to chain one, go into the first stitch and then skip over the second stitch. So yeah, this side is normal and then this side is decreased. 
So let me work my way over to the other side and show you one more time. I'm at the end of the row. I'm going to make sure that I go into the very last stitch and then chain one, flip the project over, go into the very first stitch of the new row. Then I'm going to skip over the second stitch, go into the third stitch right here. And then I am just going to continue on with the rest of the row after that. Now, for the first couple of times you do this, you may not really see a difference, but as you continue doing this more and more, you'll start to see the slant, and you can kind of see it already. So as opposed to the straight edge, you can see it's starting to go this way. So remember, only do the decreasing on one side, the same side, because you want the other side to still be straight. But yeah, that's pretty much the pattern. You're just going to continue making um, that rows and rows following this pattern until you reach the top of the cardigan right here or you put the project against yourself and it covers you the way you want it to. And you're pretty much going to keep going until the top of it wraps over your collarbone. So yeah, just continue with that pattern and make rows and rows of half double crochet until you're done. And I will check back in with you once I make a replica of this one. So this is what the project looks like after a couple more rows. You can better see the slant in the decreased side as opposed to this side, which is still straight. So yeah, I just wanted to give you a quick little update. I'm just going to continue on with this pattern until I reach the top right here. So I've officially completed crocheting the right side of the cardigan. So again, I just followed that pattern until I reach the top of the cardigan or I put it against myself and I light the coverage. This is the part that's going to reach your collarbone slash your shoulder. And this is how far along the cardigan is going to go to. So if you want like a cropped cardigan, like this kind of is a cropped cardigan. Um, or if you want a longer cardigan, that totally depends on you. But for me, I like this length, so I'm done with this side. So for you, you would need to pretty much do the exact same thing all over again with a different color on the other side. So you have a total of two front pieces. And now we can move on to a different piece. For now, we're going to move on to the sleeves. And in order to make the sleeves, we pretty much have to make a giant rectangle that's going to wrap around our arms. And this is how I make mine. So I want one of my sleeves to be pink and the other one to be green. So I will show you how I make the pink one. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing just with the green. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my pink yarn and create a slip knot. Then I'm going to put my hook through the slip knot and then chain 80 chains. The way I figured out that I need to chain 80 chains is however many chains you need for the chain to stretch from your wrist all the way up to your shoulder, that's how many you need to make. So for me, that's 80 chains. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and count my way up to 80. So I have completed my chain of 80 and again it stretches from my wrist all the way up to my shoulder and this is going to be the length of your sleeve. And from here, we're just going to continue making rows and rows and rows of half double crochet. So go back on your chain with a half double crochet until you reach the very end of the row. Now for the rest of the project, we're not going to be doing any more decreasing. So every time you reach the end of the row, you're going to make sure that you go into the very last stitch, chain one, then flip the project over, go into the very first stitch, and then every single row until you reach the end of the row, and you repeat the process. That way, the ends of the project are nice and straight. Again, all you need to do is continue making rows and rows of single crochet until the project is actually wide enough to wrap around your entire arm. And I will be showing you my progress, so I will be checking back in with you soon after I've created a couple more rows of half double crochet. So this is my project after a few more rows of half double crochet. And again, I make sure that I go into the very last stitch of every row, then I chain one, flip the project over, then go into the very first stitch of the new row to make sure that the edges are straight. And 
yeah, that's pretty much it. You're just going to have to continue making more and more rows of half double crochet until this project is wide enough so that when you wrap it around your arm like this, it completely again wraps around. Now this is where you decide how tight you want your sleeves to be. I want my sleeves to be very very baggy so uh, my project is going to be very very wide essentially probably around this wide. I want it to be very baggy like so. So eventually that's what the pink um, project is going to look like. It's going to look very wide like this. So again, just continue making rows and rows of half double crochet. Crocheting a cardigan is fairly simple because all you really need to know are three different stitches. Well, you need to know how to make a slip knot, you need to know how to chain, and how to use a half double crochet or any like stitch that you decide. Everything else is just very time consuming. <laughs> So yeah, just continue making more rows and rows of half double crochet until the project is able to wrap around not the skinniest part of your arm, but the biggest part of your arm because if you go by the skinniest part of your arm, it's not going to fit your bicep and tricep area. It's only going to fit your forearm and wrist. So make sure that you're putting the project on as if you're going to wear it and measuring it out so that you know the sleeve is going to fit you comfortably. So yes, from here just keep on making those rows and rows of half double crochet. So here's the progress of my sleeve. So I've created some more uh, half double crochets and technically it is wide enough to wrap around my arm. So if I wanted my sleeves to be tight then I would be headed on to the next step, which would be to attach the two ends together to actually create the sleeve. But since I do not want them to fit tightly, I want them really loose, I'm actually going to go ahead and double the size right here so uh, they could be nice and floppy and comfortable for me. But of course, it totally depends on you. Again, just wrap it around your arm, and once you're happy with the fit of it, then we can move on to the next step. But for me, I'm just going to keep on going and check back in with you once I'm done with the sleeve. Okay, so I have completed crocheting the sleeve. What we're going to do is we're going to fold it over like this. And then we're going to attach the two ends right here together using a slip stitch. And then we would be essentially done with the sleeve unless you actually want to make a little cuff here. Now I know I said earlier that we weren't going to do any more decreasing, but if you want to make this little cuff here, we're going to do some decreasing. But again, that's totally optional. If you want this to be more of like a bell sleeve, like an open sleeve like this, then you don't have to worry about it. But yeah, I have already made my green sleeve. And again, you know that you're done crocheting your sleeve when you wrap it against your arm, like so. You put the two ends together and you're happy with how wide it is. Now if you want it tight, of course, you could just finish off your project once it wraps around your arm like this. That's totally fine, totally up to you. But for me personally, I do like baggier sleeves, so that's why I crocheted a lot more. I have a lot of space right here, but that's what I really, really like. So. After you are happy with the size of your sleeve, you're going to put the two sides together or the two ends together where you want them to attach to. So you want them to be attached right here. So it's a tube instead of just a flat rectangle. And we're going to put our hook through the stitch that's at the end where you left off and then also through the end of the other sleeve. And you're just going to slip stitch them together. So you're going to go all along the sleeve here and attach the two sides together with a slip stitch. So just go all the way down to the end. Just keep on going through the various stitches. So uh, I'm going through one side right here and then the adjacent other side right over here. Then yarning over then going through both stitches then through the loop that's still left on my hook. So through one stitch, then through the other side, then yarn over, then through both stitches, and then through the last loop. So through one stitch on one side, through the other stitch on the other side, yarn over, 
then through both loops, and then through that last loop that's left on your hook. And yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. You're just going to go all the way down to the end of the sleeve, and you'll either be done, or you can add the little cuff that I did on this green sleeve, and I'll show you how to do that once I have reached the end. Okay, so I am at the end here. I'm just going to go into one last stitch to complete attaching the sleeve. So this is what the sleeve looks like now. It's nice and attached and I can put my arm through and it's a proper sleeve. Now again, you can leave the sleeve like this if you like the opening nice and wide, but I do want to make a little bit of a cuff so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to make four rows of single crochet all along the rim here and then after that I'm actually going to start decreasing um, every other stitch to make it smaller and smaller until it's finally small enough to where I can still fit my hand through but it's not as baggy. So. I don't really know how to explain it, but I really like this fit. So it's not too tight around my wrist, and I'm able to put my hand easily through it. So yeah, I'm going to make four rows of single crochet going into every single stitch, and then after I'm done with the fourth row, then I'm going to skip every other stitch to decrease. After um, that, I'm going to make another three or four more rows until I get to this point, and yeah, that's how I make the cuff. So in order to make the cuff, we're going to actually start decreasing right away. So that way the wide portion of the sleeve is brought down a bit in the beginning. So we are going to now use a single crochet. And a single crochet is through the stitch, yarn over, back through the stitch, yarn over through the last two loops. And you're going to be skipping as much as you can. So I could go into this stitch right here, but I'll go into this stitch. That way it's like decreasing the stitches and kind of pulling everything inward, which is what you want. You want everything to get smaller. That way we could make the cup and it will wrap around our wrist a little bit better. So instead of going in here, I'm gonna go right in here and make my single crochet. Then instead of in there, I'll go in here and make my single crochet. In here, nope, I'm gonna go in here. Skip that, go in here, skip that, go in here, and so on and so forth. And you can already see that it's starting to ruffle right here, and it's because it's making everything smaller while this is still poofy. And that's all we want, so don't worry if it starts doing that, unless, of course, it gets way too small. Then maybe you should not skip as many stitches, but um, for the most part, me going into every other stitch has worked out for me so far. So I'm going to do that um, for two rows and then after that I just go into every single row because it's already small. But of course you can use trial and error to figure out what works best for you. But yeah, I just made um, two rows of single crochet where I am decreasing and then after that I just go into every single stitch and then go around and around and around until it looks like this. So here I've created a couple rows while skipping and decreasing and now I'm going to make probably four more rows without decreasing and making sure that I go into every single stitch. So once you're satisfied with the size of your cuff, you can just cut the yarn from the yarn ball and then seal your project by yarning over, then going through the one last loop then giving the excess yarn a tug, and that's how you seal a project. I also like to tuck my excess yarn in, that way it's out of the way. And then, you, of course, you could cut the rest off later. So yeah, that's how you make your sleeves. So we've already made two sleeves, as well as two of the front pieces. So right here, and right here. So our cardigan is coming together, as you can probably not see because I didn't move the camera right. <laughs> but yeah, our cardigan is coming together. So all we need to crochet now is the back piece, and the back piece is super easy because it's just one giant rectangle. And for the back piece, I'm going to be using this lilac yarn, and you pretty much start the project as you would any other. You're going to grab your yarn, you're going to make a slip knot, then you're going to put your hook through that slip knot, then chain 
however many chains you need in order for it to reach across your back. Or of course, if you have a sample cardigan, you could of course just use that as well. So a chain that is long enough to go from one end of the cardigan to the other. So for me, it's probably also going to be like 80 chains. And after I created 80 chains, I'm going to go back on it with a half double crochet and then just make a square, just make a square. I'm going to make sure that I chain one, flip the project over, and then go into every single stitch to keep the edges nice and straight. But yeah, essentially I'm just going to make one giant square or rectangle the same shape as the back of the cardigan right here. Update, so I actually made 70 chains, not 80 chains this time. So now that I have crocheted my chain for the back piece, I'm going to go back on it with a half double crochet as we've been doing practically this whole project. And again, we're just going to create rows and rows of half double crochet until the entire project covers your back or it's the same size as your sample cardigan. So yeah. Just gonna start creating more and more rows of this, making sure they keep the edges straight and uh, until it's able to uh, be the same size as this back piece of the cardigan, I'm just gonna keep on crocheting. So I've just finished crocheting the back piece for the cardigan and again all I did was create rows and rows upon rows of half double crochet making sure that I chain one, flip the project over, then go into the very first stitch and then all the rest of the stitches for the entirety of the project. That way the edges are nice and straight and the project is a square. So after you have completed crocheting the back portion, the two front pieces, as well as the two sleeves, then you are completely done with the initial crocheting aspects of the cardigan now to put everything together so just as a reference i'm just going to put everything as it should be so the back piece the two sleeves and then the two front pieces so i have my blue piece as well as my yellow piece and i believe this is how i'm going to attach all the colors together so it's going to have blue and green on one side and yellow and pink on the other and now it's time to, of course, attach everything together. So we're going to attach this top portion of the front piece of the top to the back portion right here. So we're just going to slip stitch everything together just as we did for the sleeves here. But we're just going to attach it right here. And then we're also going to attach the sleeves, the back part of the sleeve to the back part the front part of the sleeve to the front part and then the front piece and the back piece together after you have attached the sleeves. And we're just going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So again, you're just going to um, slip stitch everything together so it's attached similarly to how we did the sleeves. And I go into further detail on how I attach everything in my other crochet cardigan tutorial. If you do not know how to do this, that will be linked in the description box down below. Essentially, I just took each piece and made sure that I aligned them where I want them to actually be attached to. And then I held them close together so that I knew that I was actually going to attach them where I wanted to attach them. I grabbed my yarn, which in this case I'm using white yarn. That way it was easier for you to see. And I just slip stitched through both of them. Again, exactly the same way to attach the sleeves together. You just slip stitch through the two areas that you want to join and you're good to go. So this is everything all attached. I used white yarn so you could see it a little bit better. So again, I attach the front part of the sleeve to the front piece, as well as the back part of the sleeve to the back piece, and I just used a slip stitch for everything. I also attached the two up here, as well as on the side right here, and of course I did everything inside out, that way the stitches will be on, all the stitches will be on one side, the side I do not want to show. And then after you have attached everything together using a slip stitch, then all you have to do is bring everything right side in and look at the final product. 
So this is what the project looks like. Right side in. Yay, it looks super cute. I was actually kind of nervous about how it would look like when I finally put it all together with all the colors and stuff, but I actually really, really love the way that it turned out. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I know I did go a bit fast in some points, but if you want a slower, slightly more beginner-friendly tutorial on how to crochet a cardigan, I will put my first crochet cardigan video tutorial in the description box down below so you could follow along with that. It's pretty much the same exact steps, I just use one color for that one though. So yeah, thank you guys so much again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, if you love free crochet tutorials, please visit the rest of my channel. I have so many free, fun, beginner-friendly to intermediate and more advanced tutorials for you. Under the crochet playlist, you could just search up crochet or find my crochet playlist and you'll find lots of really fun projects. Thank you so much again for watching. Please don't forget to click that red subscribe button if you have not already. So I can see you next time. Bye and have a magical day. These days, under the sun together. These days, let's make them last forever. These days, these days, let's hope they last forever.